Hey, today I want to talk to you about the three freelance rules. There's three of them. At least these are the three rules that I personally have been trying to follow, decided that in 2017 I will be following them almost entirely, completely, 100%ly, all the time. Here are the three rules that I've heard through podcasts, through talking to people, being in the industry now a number of years. These rules I'm calling the three Ps. The three Ps of freelancers or cinematographers. Number one is pay. Pay is pretty much uh, universal for freelancers. It's how you make your money. It's how you pay your bills. From 1995 up until about 2007, I had a day job and all my projects, all my film projects, all my creative projects I was doing was in addition to that day job paycheck. I officially went freelance, started my own company. And since then, all the work that has come my way has been freelance work. I don't have that benefit of having the safety net of having a day job anymore. Now, the money coming in is paying your bills. And if there's no money coming in, you can't pay your bills and you're fucked. You don't want to be fucked. You have to make that balance. You've got a ton of good work coming in or good money coming in. You can start taking more free things. In general, you got to realize that at the end of the day, money does need to be coming in one way or the other. And you have to figure out how that way is and then justify the rest of the stuff from that. Number two of the three Ps is people. Who are the people that are going to be on this project? Are they going to help you? Do you know them? Do you like working with them? There's nothing worse than being on projects that you are working next to or with or for someone that you don't get along with, you don't like. In my opinion, there's no reason to work with those type of people. Um, it stresses you out. It's an uncomfortable situation. It's like being in a bad relationship and I've been in a lot of bad relationships. You don't want that. You want to be around people that you want to be around, that you that inspire you, that do things that you're doing maybe better than you. Maybe that you're on a set or you're on a project that the people on that project you can learn from. You're not always coming to set as the one who knows the most and everyone is learning from you. Now there gets to be a, a point where that switch which is kind of where I feel I'm getting to right now, going on the set and you're teaching other people. If you know that going into the project, that's that's one thing. On the other hand, you're coming onto a set and are just thrown into it and you're just there as a pair of hands. It's okay if that's what you want to do. If you want to though be coming onto a set as a certain role or a certain skill, or you're coming to this particular set because you want to learn this particular thing, from this particular set of people is a completely different thing. You need to get better for yourself. And the way that uh, I personally feel that I get better is to learn from watching other people, learn from stuff online, learn from people I work with. It's better to be inspired by people rather than be around people that are uninspiring. How about that? Number three is project. Project is what is this project? Is this project something that you want to do? It's something that's going to help you in your career, be good on your reel, is a fun thing to do. Me personally, I'm coming on now almost entirely as a director of photography or cinematographer. I'm trying to start doing projects that I can give something to, it's a project that I'll read the script and I'll have an idea of how I want to shoot it and I get visuals in my head rather than projects that I come on and I'm just there and we figure it all out and nothing's planned out. There's no creative vision that has been set up prior to getting on set. You need to go on projects that you're happy to be on, you want to be on. It's something you want to be doing. It's something that is creative for you and gets you to a place that you want to be going. Yes, you have a camera, you know how to shoot. What do you want to do with that skill? Not necessarily just whatever comes my way, I'll take it. Maybe there was a time and place for that. Me personally, I think I'm trying to move on to bigger and better things. I wanna do projects I wanna do. I wanna do projects that I can be happy of and proud of and show people and be like, yes, I did that. Those are the three things. Now, the general rule in those three things are a project comes your way and you go down these three things uh, and it checks off all three of them. It's a fucking great project. The pay is what you wanna be getting paid or you're, you're happy with getting paid. The people you're working with 
you like working with those people. There's someone on that set that you want to impress or you want to get your name in front of or you want to be involved with a project that that person has been doing or that company has been doing. The project, you, you like the project. You think it's a great project. You like the script, you have ideas. Um, it's something that you want on your reel. It's something that you feel your personal skills can benefit. Um, being on that project and benefit the project in general. If all three P's are met, do it. No questions, do it. That's what you want to do? Awesome. After the all three things, that's where it gets sketchy. 50% of the things you're offered, it's probably going to be only two of those three things. This is probably a lot of the work you're going to get. It's going to be maybe a high paid job, but it's something you don't really want to do. But the people you like, the project you really like, it's a passion project. You want to work with the people that are involved, but there's no budget in it. A variation, th two of those three things. That's, that's most of the work that you're going to get in as a freelancer. And that's pretty much the point where most of us are and we're trying to move towards the next point, which is the perfect three. It maybe never will come, but every once in a while it does. And those are the things that you're like, oh my God, I'm at this level, awesome. I think that's the level most of us are trying to get to if you're really passionate about your career. The third and the evil one, only one of those P's is met. I would say 40% of the work that comes in your way is gonna be one of the P's. It's going to either be a great paying job, but you don't really like the people that are gonna be involved in it. They don't really bring anything creatively to the table. You have conflicts with them, bad relationships with them or something like that. And the project isn't something you really want to do. It's, it's the type of work you don't want to be doing. It's the type of thing that is, um, you feel a step backwards from where you're trying to go forward forward, there's either little to no pay. This happens very often. It is the, the type of situation where you really have to know the game and know the rules before coming into it and know the fact that, yes, there's only going to be one of those P's met. Are you okay with that? And if you're not okay with that, this is the type of project you pass on. There is a fourth hidden thing, which is none of those three P's are met. This is the place you usually get to when you've been doing this for about you know, 10 years, 10 plus years, and you've got experience, you've shot a bunch of stuff, you've learned from your mistakes, you've worked your way up to getting a decent day rate, and if a project comes to you that doesn't meet any of these things, it's kind of a no question pass on, in my opinion. If you're just starting out, it's, it's kind of different. You need as much experience as you can. You need to meet people. You need to shoot as much as you can. And the best advice I can give to starting filmmakers is you're going to learn from your mistakes. I've learned on every gig more from my mistakes than I have my successes. Of course, you don't want to make mistakes, but unless you make mistakes, you will not be able to know what not to do in the future. And the only way to make mistakes is to work enough and do enough things that you're able to make them those mistakes. Um, a lot of the projects I take on and I personally come up with or write are projects based on a idea that I've never done before or a trick that I would like to try. You have to do it first and screw it up or figure out how to do it. Um, maybe you have 100% success on the first time, that's great. Uh, a lot of times that's not gonna happen though. So that's about it. Those are the three things. Hopefully that made sense. I've personally heard it on a bunch of different places and a bunch of different people. And it's something that now every time I get a job, I think about and it's been helping me and hopefully it will help you. Um, if anyone else has any tips along this line, put them in the comments below and let me know. And thank you very much for watching.